Don't get quiet on me now. We're ready to start, all right? Let's get, let's get together and have church. Watch out. Amen. That Charles Johnson sings that song, Cut Him Walk Without You Holding My Hand. That's usually how he starts up. Let's have church. So let's do it tonight. Let's get together and let's give God some praise. Glory and honor. He's doing all tonight, all right? Choir, come on up and let's sing, would you? Amen. I see y'all's enjoying having those seats in the back. Where they come from, boy? Alice said we're moving all four of them up front. <laughs> Those are some comfortable seats. We thank uh, Big Springs Church at Mallory for donating those chairs. We got them for nothing. They said just load them up and take them. So thank God for that. God in the way. All right, right there.
Amen. 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 Am
pray for my wife and I. We may have a place to live. <laughs> Come on out. Paul, I'd like for the church to ring in her arms when we pray. Uh, for about two weeks now, she's not been able to hardly eat anything. Uh, in case the thing that's a while later, I'd like for the church to pray for her. Uh, we're going to take her to the doctor tomorrow to uh, see if they can let us uh, know what's going on with her. But most of all, I'd like for the church to pray that she'll give her heart of her life back to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
and Lana want to hear, I had a vision. Oh yeah. yeah. Have you ever had a vision? <laughs> Think about a vision of heaven yeah. and what you're going to see Rest and what you're going to be. Yeah. And if there's <coughs> something there that you won't see, God will handle that when the time comes. So I'm just so proud to be here. I had a vision of heaven. What my eyes they did see as I did way up yonder in that sweet eternity. I thought I Time 
to, to love and hug and, and do whatever I want to throughout all eternity. Amen. That's what I'm looking forward to. But I want to thank the man that made it possible for me. Because nobody down here could do it. That's right. Jesus. It, took, it took the blood of Christ to cover our sins today, and I thank you for it. This old house.
song we put together. For me and Jesus, got our own place to go. I 
living in a cold, dark world. Evolution all by man. Just bear with me and 
we'll get through it. I'm going to ask those of you that can and will tonight to stand with me with your Bibles open as we honor God by reading His holy, inspired, and arid, infallible Word beginning in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. The Bible says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which He consecrated for us, through the veil that is His flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, full assurance, faith, having our hearts sprinkled with an evil con from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Yes, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much and the more as you see the day approaching. As you see the day approaching, and what day is he talking about? He's talking about the day Jesus steps out on that cloud and says, Church, come home. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, God, tonight, it's been great already. God, I sense your presence here in this place. Father, right now, tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would surround your house with your mighty angels with swords drawn to keep Satan and every demon of hell at bay. I pray, God, that you would fill this place with your presence like you never have before and never will again. I pray, God, you turn me loose tonight and let me preach Jesus like I never have before and never will again. God, hide me behind the cross that Jesus may be magnified and glorified and lifted up. Father God, tonight, may you increase and I decrease. Speak your message through these lips of clay of mine. And God... I just pray that you show up here in a way, God, that just when we leave here tonight, even though the singing was great, I pray to God tonight we won't leave here talking about the singing. I pray we won't leave here talking about the preaching. I pray God tonight that we leave here talking about you. Because it's all about you. God save that soul that's nearest hell tonight. We'll give you praise and we'll give you glory. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, for He alone is worthy. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. There's an old German proverb that goes like this. If God were not willing to forgive sin, heaven would be empty. That would be a very boring, lonely place, wouldn't it? There's a foundation that I'm going to lay before we get into telling you how to make a lettuce sandwich. And hopefully when you leave here tonight, you'll be able to tell somebody how to do that. The Bible says in verses 19 and 20, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which He has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, His flesh. That word boldness there speaks of the freedom that we have to enter into the presence of a holy God. How many of you take advantage of that freedom on a regular basis? Amen? There's the position of this boldness. Every single believer, every single child of God has the freedom to enter the presence of God. And this privilege is no longer limited to the priesthood. The verse says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness. We have the possession of that boldness. But I want you to know there was a price that had to be paid for that boldness. Amen? The price which was paid was the precious shed blood Amen. of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Just as the old covenant high priest was able to enter the most holy place by the blood of animals, the blood of Jesus has won you and I that are Christians tonight confident entrance into God's presence. 
First Peter chapter 3 and verse 18 says, Christ has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but, be, but quickened by the Spirit. And then there's the pathway into this boldness. The pathway is a new and living way. It is new in contrast to the Old Testament way which shut men out from the presence of God. And it is living because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no man comes unto the Father, Jesus said, but by the church. Hello? Excuse me? Don't say by the church, does it? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Amen? There's only one way to come to God. And it ain't through church membership. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. The pathway is through the veil which speaks of the flesh or the humanity of Jesus Christ. The veil refers to the curtain that stood between the holy place and the most holy place. And there are a number of ways in which the veil of the tabernacle pointed to Jesus Christ in the flesh. First of all, the veil that was in between the most holy place and the holy place was made by women. In Exodus chapter 35 and verse 25, the Bible says, And all the women that were wise-hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. In Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, the Bible says that Christ was made of woman. It, it had four colors in it. The veil did. It had purple, scarlet, white, and blue. And it's amazing because Christ is presented in the four Gospels using those same colors. In the book of Matthew, Jesus Christ is represented as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that color is purple. In the book of Mark, He is presented in scarlet. And that represented the servant. Jesus Christ told us, He said, I have not come to be served, but to serve mankind. In the book of Luke, the color that is represented is white and it represents the man. And I love the fact that Jesus Christ used the phrase Son of Man some 75 times in the Gospels because that's how He wanted folks to relate to Him. He wanted to know, yes, I am God come in the flesh. But I am also man because I want to identify with you. You see, Jesus Christ, when He came to this earth, went through every single thing that you and I go through today. If He had not, He could not identify with you and I. We can stand on the day of judgment. We can stand in front of God and say, you don't have a clue what I've gone through because you weren't there. But He can. He can because He has, and He did. Amen. Amen. Christ went through it all for you and I. While the veil was in one piece, it shut people out from the presence of God. And only the high priest on the Day of Atonement could pass through the veil in the most holy place while the rest of the people had to stay outside. And they would take a cowbell 
And they would tie rope around his foot. And they would listen for that cowbell. Yep. And as long as they heard that bell, they knew everything was all right. Yep. See, before the high priest went in there, he had to make sure he was right with God. Because if he wasn't right with God, they, God would strike him dead. And they wouldn't go in to get him. Whoa, oh, no. They just pulled that rope out. And, and then they'd look at the high priest junior and say, you're up. How would you like to have that job, huh? That's how the priest went in. He had to make sure that he was right with God. The perfect life of Christ condemns sinners. That body was rent at the cross when Jesus died. And that shows how Christ opened up the way for you and I into the presence of God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 27 and verse 51, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, get this, from top to bottom. And I always wondered, why, why? Why from the top to the bottom? Why not from the bottom to the top? Would it make a difference? Yes, it does. Because being ripped from the top to the bottom showed how God came and gave salvation to man and not man reaching up to give it from God. Bless the Lord. You hear me? That's right. That's right. See, we all think that we can do something to get our salvation. We can't. Bless the Lord. Because Jesus... Pay the price. Amen. As the old covenant priest had to pass through the veil, the new covenant people of God enter His presence by way of the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross. Now, there are three things I want to share with you about making a lettuce sandwich. Don't ever forget them. I'm going to try and hurt you. If you have to go to work in the morning like me, I'll write you a note. Okay? It'll be all right. But here we go. Number one, the first ingredient, if we're going to make a lettuce sandwich, is this. Let us draw near to God. Let us draw near to God. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. There are four conditions of drawing near to God. First of all, we are to come with a true heart. Do you hear me, church? We are to come with a true heart. And that phrase, true heart, there means that we are to come to God with a sincere heart. We are to come to God with a genuine heart. Heart. In other words, in good old fashioned Logan County English, it's time to get real with God. And it's time to be real with God. You see, we can dress up the outside and make it look real pretty, but the inside can be as black as coal. Amen. And a lot of people spend a lot of money. To make the end, to make the outside look really good. These people, Dr. Adkins, in Hollywood, that's had so many facelifts that if you walk up and pitch them on the cheek, they would bounce off every wall in this house. Amen. And everybody's worried about the outside. I remember when I started losing my hair. And yes. I have lost my hair. I do not know where I lost it. I have not been able to find it. But it's been gone for some time. I started losing my hair. I told my wife, I said, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to give you some clothes. She said, no. You look good with that. I couldn't argue with that. But then one day my wife, God love her, found a gray hair and said, I got to go. Give me some clear all. I said, no, you don't. You look just fine without it. <laughs> if I, if you got to watch mine turn loose, I'm going to watch yours turn gray. Woo! Glory. And she ain't here tonight. And you can take 
that part out of the tape, brother. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. I appreciate that. It is our heart that determines our outward behavior. The Bible says in the book of Luke, in chapter 6 and verse 45, a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart... His mouth speaks. Amen? What is in your heart will eventually come out of your mouth. And the amazing thing about that is a lot of people don't think about what they say. That way they can be just as surprised when everybody, just like everybody else when they hear it just fly between their lips. Amen? First Samuel chapter 16 speaks of when Nathan, uh, Samuel went to the house of Jesse to anoint the next king of Israel. And Jesse had all of his sons there and they began to come in front of Samuel. And when he saw the first one, he was, he was young and he was built and he was strong. Samuel said, surely this is the one. And God said, no. And he went through the line of the sons. God said, no, every time. And then Samuel asked Jesse, do you have any more? He said, yeah, I got one. He David, he's out yonder watching the sheep. Samuel said, go get him. And when David came in, he was about five foot tall, red haired, freckled faced little boy, weighed about a hundred pounds with rocks in his pocket. And he walked in, and God told Samuel, that's the one. And when he told him, he said this the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. He looks on the heart. That's why we got to be real, people. We got to know that we know that we know Jesus. Amen, brother. Amen. We must possess a genuine devotion rather than a hypocrisy. And I know, I know a lot of people that think about it. They think about, listen, listen. I don't go to church. I don't go to church. Why don't you go? Because the church is filled up with hypocrites. And you know what I tell them? <laughs> I'd rather sit in the house of God with a few of them than die and go to hell with all of them. Amen? That's right.
And whoever finds it can have it. Now, how would you go about looking for it? Would you do what my children did and my grandchildren did? Well, God is I can't. I can't find it. I look for it, but I can't find it. Or would you be ripping up every bit of carpet and chair and everything else in this church to help me find it? Yeah. What's the difference? You were diligently seeking the money. Amen. Now, just so you know, I ain't got a thousand dollars. I ain't got a thousand cents. Ask my wife, she'll tell you he's got no sense. But we don't leave that there. But you understand what I'm talking about, amen? <coughs> we are to come in full assurance and we are to come diligently seeking Him. <coughs> Excuse me. Because He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. We are to have our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And we are to have our bodies washed with pure water. The images of sprinkling and washing go back to the old covenant purification rituals. The sprinkling and washing are symbols of the effect of Christ's sacrifice. Our hearts are sprinkled from a guilty conscience pictures our salvation and our bodies washed symbolizes the righteous lifestyle that we're called to live. The second thing you need to make a lettuce sandwich is this. Let us hold fast the profession of faith. In verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. For He is faithful that promised most other translations that we have today have the word hope in this verse instead of faith. How are we to hold to the hope that we profess? We are to hold to it without wavering. Amen? You cannot just be blown by the wind in each no. and every way you want. No. I had a friend of mine that I ministered with in the first church I pastored in. Uh, and, and he had a friend he worked with. He was trying to witness to it. He told his friend, he said, listen, listen, I've heard all about it. He said, this is how I'm going to do it. He said, on the day Jesus has me go into heaven, if it's the Baptist people he's going to have going in, that's what I'm going to be. If it's the Episcopalians he's got going in, that's what I'm going to be. You understand what I'm saying? You can't do that. You've got to know that you know that you know Jesus as your Savior because I've got news for you. There's not a Baptist heaven. There's not an Episcopalian heaven. There's not a, a Holy Roller heaven. There's one heaven. And the only way we're getting in is to know Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Amen? We are to lay hold of our hope in Christ and never let it go even in the slightest. The story is told about a little boy named Martin Rowe. He lived on a farm with his family in rural Georgia. When he was six years old, Martin was riding the tractor with his father when the massive machine turned over. The little boy was hurt so badly that he lost the use of one of his arms and suffered damage to the other. While in the hospital, his family incurred a $32,000 hospital bill. One day, little Martin heard his mother and father talking outside the hospital room door. His mother was weeping and wondering how they were going to be able to pay such a massive debt. When they came into the room, Martin informed his mother that he was going to pay off the bill himself. And she responded as any mother would. She thanked him for his concern, but knowing silently that such a goal was a fantasy to a child. But when little Martin Rowe got out of the hospital, he began to pick up bottles along the side of the road. And every day after school, then he would take them and he would redeem the bottles for cash. And after several months, he was able to go and hand his mother $400 that he had collected. About that time, Martin learned that aluminum cans could be redeemed and began collecting those as well. The Reynolds Aluminum Company 
heard of the little boy's endeavor and put him in touch with the Bear Archery Company in Gainesville, Florida. The two companies began donating their scrap of aluminum to this young man. Every day after school for five years, Martin continued to pick up cans and, uh, after school. And at the age of 11, five years later, at the age of 11, Martin walked into the hospital with $32,000 and paid the debt off. Amen. Because he was consistent. Because he said, I know that I know that I know that I can. Do you know, do you know, do you know tonight that you can do anything as long as the Lord Jesus Christ is in it? Amen? Martin's story is amazing because a little boy, motivated by his great love for his parents, seized on the goal and having put his foot on the path to attain that goal, stayed on it without wavering until the end. And that's the kind of perseverance we need tonight. On what basis can we hold on to our hope in Christ without wavering? He is faithful that promise. Have you ever known Jesus Christ to break a promise? Has He ever gone back on His Word? If we can trust Him to keep it, we can trust Him to take us on. Amen? Amen. Whew! Preach you on, preach you on. I will, thank you. <clears throat> and then there's one more thing. We have to do. Let us consider let us consider one another. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Let's consider means that we are to encourage one another. The Christian community is called to a life of mutual encouragement. We have two goals in considering one another. Number one, we are to provoke unto love. That word provoke is a word which describes the act of stirring up something. It can be used in a negative sense of stirring up disagreements, but here it is used in a positive sense. Is it warm to anybody else? <laughs> to provoke unto good works. Galatians 5.13 says, By love serve one another. We accomplish these goals in two ways. By not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is. That's biblical talk. In good old fashioned Logan County. Yeah. You know what that means in good old fashioned Logan County English? Go to church! Woo! Glory! Go to church! Don't sit at home and watch church on the television. Get up and go to church. Do you know what evangelistic ministry on television is for? That's for people that can't get up and come but would want to if they could. So as long as you're able to come to the house of the Lord, get up Amen. and come to the house of the Lord. <clears throat> There's a psalm of summer that I would like to read to you now. Listen to the words. Goes along with Psalm 23 in a sense with the sound Recreation is my shepherd. I shall not stay at home. He maketh me to lie down in a sleeping bag. He leadeth me down the interstate each weekend. He restoreth my Sunday. He leadeth me to the state parks for comfort's sake. Even though I stray on the Lord's day, I will fear no reprimand, for thou art with me, my God and my real shall come. I anointest my skin with oil, my gas tank runneth dry. Surely 
My trailer shall follow me all the weekends this summer, and I shall return to the house of the Lord this fall. But then comes hunting season, and there's another song. Amen. Listen, listen, church. I had a pastor friend came from Florida to West Virginia, and he went to his church. He got there in the wintertime. And he asked the people, he said, will you help me reach the community with the gospel? And they said, preacher, listen, listen, preacher, listen. You, you come from Florida. <coughs> it's wintertime, preacher. Surely you don't expect us to go out and knock on doors in the snow. In the cold, you don't expect us to do that. But preacher, when the spring comes, we're going to be right there with you. Being new, he said, well, all right. So when the spring came, he said, church, let's go knock on some doors. They said, preacher, preacher, it's spring. we got cleaning to do. And there's baseball. There's a lot going on. Surely, you can't expect us to give up our spring time to do that, but when the summer comes, preacher, <laughs> we're going to be right there. <clears throat> preacher said, all right. Summer came. He said, let's go knock on some doors and tell people about Jesus. They said, preacher, it's summer, man. The kids are out of school. We got vacations. You know you can't expect us to go anywhere in the summer. But preacher, when the fall comes, <laughs> we're going to be right there. Fall came. He said, all right, let's go knock on some doors. He said, preacher, school's starting back now. Football practice. Cheerleading. Surely you can't expect us to go now, do you? And the preacher packed his wife and himself and went back to Florida. Folks, listen to me tonight. <coughs> All of those things are important. But none of those things are more important than our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to ask you, can you leave this church and make a lettuce sandwich that could feed a lost and dying world? It starts by having Jesus Christ as your Savior. You see, you can't share somebody with somebody else that you don't know yourself. Amen? Amen? So you've got to know that you know Jesus. And once you know Jesus, are you willing to go? Are you willing to put others first? Because that's what Jesus tells us. Ain't that right, Brother Allen? Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to reach your world with the gospel of Jesus? Are you willing to go where they are? Because that's what we got to do. we got to go get them. Amen? Well, they got to go get them. They know where the Little Baptist Church is. Amen? Sure they do. They, they drive by it every day. Yeah. But you see, the thing is, you and I have been somewhere that they haven't. We've been to the cross. We've been to Jesus Christ. And they need to come. And they don't know the way. But you and I do. You and I do. We can show them the way. <clears throat> Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. That's all right. So tonight, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Sister, Sister Jan, would you come? Get ready to sing the invitation.
Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. And I'm going to ask you right where you're standing. I know most of you folks, but I'm still going to ask. How many of you here tonight would be honest with God and honest with yourself and honest with me with no one else looking, please, no one else looking, and you would say, Preacher, I do not know Jesus as my Savior. I've never prayed the sinner's prayer. I've never asked Jesus to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. But preacher, I want to do that tonight. If that's you, I'm not going to call out your name. I'm not going to come to you. I just want to pray for you. If that's you tonight, would you simply raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. Just slip it up and slip it right back down. Anyone, quickly, before we pray. Anyone? By your testimony, everyone in this house knows Jesus as their Savior, and I give God praise for that. But now I'm going to ask you something. <clears throat> Have you been the witness that Jesus Christ has called you to be? When you walk down the street, when you walk down the street in Logan County, and people see you. Do they know that you're a child of God simply by seeing you? Or is there something in your life right now? Is there something in your heart that doesn't need to be there? Folks, you're in the best place you can be in. This altar's open. All you have to do is come and pray. Just give it to God. Is there anyone that would raise their hand and say, Preacher, pray for me that when I leave this church tonight, I know my heart will be right. I know it will be pure. I know it will be clean. And I can be the witness God's called me to be. Anybody, raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. Anyone? Quickly. I'm going to have a word of prayer. This altar is open. If you need to come, you come on. While there's still time. Father, God, tonight, I'm praying right now that you would do the one thing that the preacher can't do. I pray, God, right now that you would search every heart in this room. God, if there's one that has a spiritual need, would you give them the courage to step out and come and bring it to this altar and just leave it with you, Father? God, have your own way in this invitation. We give you praise and we give you glory. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Anyone need to come? Anyone need to come? If you're not willing to come here, if you're too afraid to step out and come to this altar, would you just simply raise your hand and say, Preacher, would you come to me? Would you come to me? I'll go right where you are. I'll pray with you right where you are. Anyone?
that wasn't a popular message. I'm gonna tell you when you get when you get to where people are living at like you do here tonight, it's not popular. Uh, that's right. There was there was a lot of people on on my friends list on Facebook that say they're Christians and I don't judge them or, or anything like that. They never go to church. I believe we need to go to church. I really do. And we have one little thing that we have to take care of. It's, it's not a little thing. It's a pretty good issue. But Brother Paul has been set aside as a deacon at this church for a long time. And he's been a deacon just about ever since he's been in church for years and years and years. But the church tonight needs to take care of making it official by presenting him a certificate of ordination. Uh, I want to read you really quick from 1 Timothy chapter 3. <coughs> Why that we do this. And this is going to be on the authority of the Lundell Fruitful Baptist Church, all right? Deacons must be grave, not double tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy, or filthy lucre, which is money or dishonestly, holding the mystery of the faith and a pure conscience. Let these also first be proved, and he has been. Let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Uh, even so, must her wives be great, not slanderers, sober-minded, faithful in all things. And let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well, purchased to themselves a good degree and a great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And that's 1 Timothy chapter 3. Now let me read you something else from uh, the minister's handbook that I carry around. Uh, at different times uh, for certain occasions like this as soon as I get to the right page. Our Lord's concern for man's physical and spiritual needs was evident in His ministry. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, restored the sight to the blind. Early in the life of the church, the church shared the common concern uh, of her Lord for this area of life and chose deacons to minister to people's needs. A long and honorable succession of deacons have expressed their confidence and concern for the church and for the people. It is our privilege and responsibility as followers of Christ to share his concern for those within the church and those without. The deacons become the heart and hand of the church in seeking out and ministering to their need. In this area, the deacon is the conscience of the congregation, the right hand of the pastor. Deacons were first appointed to the church at Jerusalem an account of their appointment is given in the sixth chapter of the book of Acts uh, and as follows. In those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmur of the Grecians among, uh, against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the day of administration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, look you out among you seven men of honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may, we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Crockett, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Permis, and Nicholas, uh, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. When they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Now, I would like to have a little word of prayer before we call Brother Paul up here at the church would. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord. Lord, we come to you as humbly as we possibly can. We pray, Lord, that you will certainly be in the arrangements of this service here tonight, Lord, as we uh, choose Brother Paul Van over, Lord, to be a deacon here at the Lundell Church. We do this, Lord, according to your word. We do it, Lord, as he has expressed his desire to be a servant to the people of this church. And Lord, be a, a right hand to the pastor, Lord, but most of all, in doing the service of you. And God, we follow the guidelines set forth in the Bible, and we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be pleased, and you will lead us and guide us, Lord, in what we do here tonight. May you put your blessings upon Brother Paul and his wife, Norma, God, as they take forth and stand forth to take this office tonight, Lord, may you bless them and guide them and lead them, Lord, in the spiritual knowledge of how to help this church. And God always be there, Father, for the church to be a help to it, as, as, as do the other deacons of this church and every member of this church. 
It's in the precious name of Jesus that we only ask this. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother Paul, if you would, Sister Norma, do you feel like coming up? I know that you're tired, but if you would, both of y'all come forward. And we will get Brother Chubby, I would like, is he here? Brother Chubby, I would like to see you trying to, if you would, Brother George, walk this back to Brother Chubby and let him sign. And I want Brother Robert to sign it. And let Sister Sharon as, sign it as the clerk of the church. We just come right here. Be fine. Be fine. I'll just have a couple questions and I'm going to talk to these guys about because I've read them over and I'm not going to be uh, very responsible and right here to die. Uh, since you have been elected to the office of the deacon in this church, you've declared your willingness to serve. Now I ask you to confirm that by the following question. Do you agree your allegiance to Jesus Christ in this church? Do you accept the office of a deacon in this church and promise to faithfully perform its duties? All right, do you promise to further the interests of the church to the best of your ability to cooperate with the pastor and the member in promoting harmonious and effective working of all its ministers? Okay. All right, now I'd like to address this question to the membership of the Lundell Church. Do you, the members of the church, acknowledge and receive this brother as your deacon? Do you promise to give him that esteem, encourage, and cooperation with this office? If so, will you signify by standing and uniting your hearts in the prayer of ordination? If you accept Brother Paul as your deacon, stand to your feet. Let us pray. Brother Paul, I pray with all my heart, as does this congregation of the Lundell Free Baptist Church, that you accept this office here tonight as a deacon, and Paul, that you would fulfill this office to the very best of your ability. And Paul, Paul, we have the confidence and the faith in you. We have confidence and the faith of Sister Norman as a faithful wife, Lord, as a faithful servant. We have that confidence, Lord. That's why we have called you, Paul, out, Lord, and, and, and brought you to this congregation tonight and give you this charge today to faithfully discharge this office to the best of your ability. And all the church, if you would, amen. Say amen. 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 All right, Brother Paul. Let me go on saying. Paul, on behalf of the Lundell Free Baptist Church, I present you coordination papers uh, in this church. And we appreciate it. Thank you. All these years. Everybody would come up and shake your balls and put his hand and let them know that you, you're proud of it. Same one. Get it in there.
there any longer? Does anybody else have anything you want to say? Tell me about that. I do. We're going to have a gospel scene on our hot dog sale Saturday. And I need stuff. Saturday. We didn't cover it. All right, Saturday, we will be having a gospel sing here at the church. Tomorrow night, uh, Saunders Church of the Race starts a revival with a preacher out of Alabama. One of the people come to town and does all that vacation Bible school. And they say he's really good. So if you get a chance, go up there. Yeah, Kevin's going to sing Monday night. I believe it is. Uh, Kevin and the group. And they were at Switzer tonight. He told me earlier that they would be here. They would be at another uh, church. So go up there and support them if you can. Uh, Wednesday night, I'll, I'm preaching at Bethel. They changed their start time to 6.30. If anybody's interested in going, they'll be starting at 6.30. Uh, what else? We got prayer meeting on Tuesday night. Go for it. All right. Our hearts and eyes clear. Reverend the Lord. Brother James Ellis, dismiss us in a word of prayer. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Paul, Maggie. Appreciate y'all coming. Appreciate y'all.